Welcome to the Monk 1 to 100 leveling skills guide. I'll be going over all of your skills as you're trained to... Hold on, I'm being handed a memo. It seems they have changed how Monk plays for the third time this expansion. Better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch us go from this... Go even further beyond. ...to this. This is a beginner focus series aimed to help those new to Final Fantasy XIV, the MMO genre, or still just need a little help. In that same vein, this will be focused on your actions and how to use them. We'll not be going deep into optimization, instead focused on the general play and giving general opening rotations. We will go through these together in order to help new players understand the process. If you wish to push your play further, there are further places you could research the job. The goal here is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. Tool tips are broken up by expansion and that expansion's level cap. So level 50 for A Realm Reborn, 60 for Heaven's Ward, 70 for Stormblood, 80 for Shadowbringers, 90 for Endwalker, and our final level cap of 100 in Dawn Trail. I recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the general tab of the actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 100. Just put your skills on your hotbars so that you are comfortable as you play. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on the how and why I set up my UI, check the description for a video about it. Finally, keep in mind that this is an active MMO. Patches can and will change jobs. Check the description for a quick overview of each patch's changes or special notes. With all that out of the way, please support me in whatever way you can, check my links below, and let's begin. Monk is a DPS job that is power and speed distilled. Once a very complex job, things have been streamlined quite a bit. That isn't to say there aren't optimizations to be made, plenty of those still happen. The barrier to entry is far smoother to get over, but we still have stances, a lot of UI pieces, and resource management. The blitz mechanic alone may end up being a difficulty point, and putting specific action combinations under perfect balance will grant you extremely powerful attacks. This is on top of being the fastest GCD of any job at base and a lot of extra weaving that is semi-random. Overall, Monk has a few specific tricks to learn, would be preferred by people who like fast jobs, but definitely has gotten easier to understand. To play a pugilist, you either start as one, or pick the class up in the old Daw Pugilist Guild after completion of your level 10 class quest as your first class. Let's get into the finer details of each skill. Level 1, Greased Lightning. Before talking about skills we actively use, we have Greased Lightning. Your recast time and auto attack speed is 5% faster than any other class or job. This is completely passive and always active. This boost will get stronger as we reach higher levels. For now, this causes your base GCD to be 2.37 instead of the typical 2.5 seconds. Level 1, Boot Shine. Our initial basic attack, it does 180 potency of damage to the target. Just spam it to kill. When we get our level 4 skill, we have to make note of Bootshine's additional effect, Changes Form to Raptor. Level 4, True Strike. This attack can only be used when in Raptor form, which is granted by Bootshine. This does 260 potency of damage to a target. This is essentially a combo. All melee-based jobs have combos that light up with flashing borders for combo continuations. Monk slightly differs with Forms being your combo manager. The implications will be more obvious with more skills. For now, just alternate Boot Shine and True Strike, while taking note of True Strike's Changes Form to Curl. Level 6, Snap Punch. This can only be used when in Curl form, granted from True Strike. This is a dual-layered skill. It does 230 potency of damage unless you damage from the flank, or sides of the enemy. From there, it will do 290 potency of damage. This is one of two positionals for Monk. Note the picture on screen. This denotes the flanks. Always try to aim for the flanks for Snap Punch. When solo, don't bother trying for positionals unless the enemy stops to cast something. Snap Punch has the additional effect of changing you to Opo Opo form. This returns us back to Boot Shine. When in Opo Opo form, Boot Shine has a bonus effect of a guaranteed critical hit, or an at least 40% damage increase. Guaranteed rather than luck based. Now we have a full string of attacks that constantly loop because of forms. Rather than multiple combos or combo strings, Monk starts with one infinite length combo in essence. When you finish a combo and return to the beginning, you are getting some combo bonus. 
Keep the forms in mind going forward, as most of your skills involve it. Also note that your forms all last for 30 seconds. There are few places this 30 second timer will ever come into play in a meaningful way. Mostly just in the walk between groups of enemies or a boss, and only in a Realm Reborn content. At level 8 we have the Roll Action Second Wind. All your roll actions are extremely important, useful, and should be used. Put these on your bars, but I will not be going over them here. If you wish to hear about the uses of these skills, head below or to the card in the top right to see a video on melee roll actions. We also have Leg Sweep at level 10, and Bloodbath at level 12. Level 15, Steeled Meditation, and Steel Peak. This is a class quest skill. You cannot use it without doing a class quests. There are other skills just like this. In the top left is a denotion of this. I will not be verbally mentioning class or job quest lock skills in future, but this will always be there when relevant. Do your quests. These skills come with a new UI element, the Chakra Gauge. It has five circles of chakra. You need all five chakra filled to be able to use any skills tied to it. Steeled Meditation is one way to get chakra, the only way for now. Steeled Meditation has multiple layers. It has a global recast timer of one second inside of combat and will fill one chakra. You shouldn't use it during combat though. Using this over any sort of attacking skill is not worth it. If enemies are out of range or the bosses become immune to damage, this becomes a very good button to press. Outside of battle, it automatically fills all five chakra. Before every single encounter, be sure to hit Steeled Meditation to get your chakra. When you have all five chakra, Steeled Meditation will turn into Steel Peak, though you can disable this in the Actions window, keeping both as separate buttons if you wish. Steel Peak is not on the global cooldown that weapon skills are on. This means you can weave it, or use it between two GCD attacks. Upon using it, you will lose all five chakra and revert the skill back to Steeled Meditation. It does 180 potency to a single target. While 180 is small on its own, being able to weave it means you're losing no time between your attacks and gaining free damage. You'll get one of these every individual battle, so long as you use Steeled Meditation between groups of enemies. As a result, it adds up. Later on, this skill is going to become far more important and interactive. Get used to keeping track of it now, rather than later. Level 18, Twin Snakes. Along with this comes the Fury Gauge. It ties directly into Twin Snakes' effect. Twin Snakes is a Raptor Form skill, pairing with True Strike. It too will grant Curl Form. This does 340 potency of damage to a target and grants you Raptor's Fury, filling the empty circle under the Raptor icon. Raptor's Fury will boost True Strike's potency by 200, so from 260 to 460. This spends the stack of Fury. In essence, every full rotation through your skills, you will alternate between Twin Snakes and True Strike. You will start with Twin Snakes to get Raptor's Fury, the next time around spend it on True Strike. You can put this UI element anywhere on the screen for making sure you can keep track of your stacks of Fury. But if you're the type to stare at your hotbars, the buttons will glow at the proper times. Not both Raptor buttons, only the correct one. If you do not have Fury, Twin Snakes will glow. If you already have Fury, True Strike will glow. This takes a lot of tracking off of you, but keeping track manually will still provide some minute benefits. Level 20, Enhanced Grease to Lightning. Welcome to Grease Lightning 2. Recast time and auto attack delay are now reduced by 10% naturally. This makes your base GCD with no skill speed a 2.25 second cooldown. At level 22, we have the Roll Action Faint. Level 26, Arm of the Destroyer. This is our first AoE attack, Area of Effect. It's within the Opo Opo category with Boot Shine. It does 110 potency to all enemies within 5 yams around yourself, so you want to head into the enemy packs to hit the most enemies. Within Opo Opo form, it does an additional 10 potency per enemy. This won't matter for a while as you typically don't go from single target attacks into AoE. On 3 or more enemies, this is the only attack you need. At points it takes 4 enemies, but for now go with 3. It's likely not going to matter for these levels. Once you're down to 2 enemies left, return to your single target skills and take out whatever remains. The more enemies there are, the better and more you want to be using your AoE. Level 30, Demolish. This is a second skill for your curl form to be paired with Snap Punch. It does 280 potency to the enemy, 
or 340 potency when performed at the enemy's rear. The red portion displayed here. Like Snap Punch, it will move you to the Opo Opo form. It has effects similar to Twin Snakes, granting you two stacks of Curl's Fury. This is the two circles next to the Curl icon, which were previously solid. Fury will boost the power of Snap Punch by 150 potency, from 230 at the base to 380, 440 with the flank positional. Rather than alternating Snap Punch and Demolish, you will use Demolish every third Curl skill. Demolish to get Fury, two Snap Punches to spend them, and then go back to Demolish. You can see this in action with the glowing borders. Demolish lights up every third time around. Keep in mind these interactions are taking place along with your forms. You don't combo Demolish into Snap Punch, you use Demolish, an Opo Opo skill, a Raptor skill, then get back around to Snap Punch. It takes six full cycles to fully loop through the current rotation. Boot Shine into Twin Snakes into Demolish will not happen again for another six rotations through your forms. To obtain the Monk job, you must first reach level 30 and complete the level 30 Pugilist quest. Additionally, complete the main scenario quest, Self Management, which is at level 20 in the story. Return to the guild and the quest should be there for you. Level 30, Rock Breaker. This is our Curl form AoE. It does 150 potency to all enemies within 5 yarms of you. The issue is, for the next 15 levels, only two of our forms have AoE. Opo Opo and Curl have one, but Raptor does not. As a result, during AoE situations, we have to use fearless single target attacks. When you come to your Raptor attacks, alternate Twin Snakes and True Strike as normal. It is unlikely for tanks to be pulling groups of enemies big enough for this to not be worth it in the long run. At level 32 is the roll action Arm's Length. Level 35, Thunderclap. This is an ability with charges. Rather than having a singular cooldown, you can store up to two charges. You can spend them back to back if need be. The moment you use the first charge, the cooldown timer begins. Thunderclap's charge time is 30 seconds, for a total 60 seconds for two charges. Thunderclap has a respectable range of 20 yams, and it teleports you near instantly to the target. This can be used on enemies or party members. If you're falling behind the tank for some reason, Thunderclap to catch up. If an enemy is doing a large AoE that you must dodge out of, wait for the cast bar to get halfway completed, then select a party member who is already outside of the AoE and Thunderclap to them. The moment the AoE indicator is gone, Thunderclap back to the boss. There are a lot of ways to use this, but the main one is as a gap closer to the boss. Anytime you have to move out of range, Thunderclap back to the boss to get back into punching range ASAP. Level 38, Deep Meditation. Deep Meditation is a huge buff to our Chakra Gauge. Every critical hit you do with a weapon skill, your GCDs, has an 80% chance to give you a Chakra, which means on average, every 6-7 to seven critical hits will be an extra use of Steel Peak. It is no longer a skill you use one time per fight. You may get several uses in any individual fight. This is especially true in boss fights, since Boot Shine is a guaranteed critical hit, on top of all your other attacks having the random chance to crit. You still want to hit Meditation between pulls and during any force downtime in fights, but now that isn't the only way you're getting Steel Peaks. Get watching a gauge and listen for the chime to use Steel Peak the moment you hit 5 Chakra. Level 40, Enhanced Greased Lightning 2. We have Greased Lightning 3. It has been upgraded to a 15% reduction to our global cooldown and auto attack delay. From now on and until Shadowbringers, our base GCD is a 2.12 second cooldown. Level 40, Inspirited Meditation and Howling Fist. Inspirited Meditation works exactly the same as Steeled Meditation. The only reason this exists is because of action change settings. Maybe you want both buttons to turn into their respective chakra spenders. For me, I have Howling Fist as its own button, while Steeled Meditation is my only meditation button. This will automatically turn into Steel Peak. Use whatever settings combination you want, as long as you have access to any meditation skill, plus both Steel Peak and Howling Fist. Howling Fist itself is an AoE form of Steel Peak. It shares the same cooldown and spends all five of your chakra. It does 100 potency of damage to all enemies in a 10 yom line in front of you. You do have to aim this differently than your normal AoE attacks. It involves a little dancing in and out of enemies, but it's not too difficult. If there are two or more enemies, use Howling Fist instead of Steel Peak. It only takes two to be stronger. Larger groups, it gets even stronger like with all AoE. 
Make sure you're using Howling Fist every time you fill up on Chakra in AoE situations. Level 42, Mantra. On a 90 second cooldown and having a 30 arm range, you and all allies affected will be given 10% extra healing from all heals for 15 seconds. The easiest way to see this for yourself is with Second Wind. Use it, mark down the healing amount, then use it again in 2 minutes with Mantra up. Make sure to take variants and critical hits into account, since heals can crit too. Use this anywhere major healing is needed. If a boss is doing big raid-wide damage, maybe even multiple times in a row, pop Mantra to make the healers have an easier time. A more quote-unquote hidden use, though, is in dungeons. Just because it is a large area of effect doesn't mean it needs to be used as such. Use it for just the tank. If you haven't already, you'll see that a lot of tanks like to pull a lot of enemies at once. Two groups, three groups, or if possible, even four groups of enemies. This leads to enemies doing a lot of damage to the tank very quickly. You can help out by using Mantra, making every heal the healer uses a lot more effective. Level 45, Four Point Fury. Four Point Fury fills in our Raptor Form AoE slot with a 140 potency AoE. It works the same as our other AoE hits. When encountering three or more enemies, make sure to keep rotating through your AoE buttons instead of single target. Use those only once the herd has thinned out. At level 50, we have our final roll action, True North. As a reminder, there is a dedicated video for these skills in the description. Level 50, Dragon Kick. This is our final main attack. Dragon Kick is our fury gain for Boot Shine. It deals 240 potency to our target and gives us one stack of Opo Opo's Fury. Provided you are in Opo Opo form, that is. This makes Boot Shine a guaranteed critical hit of 380 potency when you come back around to it. This brings us to the classic 2-2-3 ratio that Monk has essentially had since the beginning. For your single target rotation, every other Opo Opo skill is a Dragon Kick. Every other Raptor skill is Twin Snakes and Demolish gets used every third curl skill, or a combo ratio of 2-2-3. It's a lot simpler these days since you don't have to manually track any buffs or debuffs, and the glowing lights handhold you through this ratio. Just in case this future changes, I wanted to continue to mention this. These days, though, the 2-2-3 ratio is a mnemonic that doesn't serve too great a purpose beyond summing up the basic rotation. This applies all the way up to level cap, too. You get additional skills that play with this, but you'll always return to the base rotation after burst phases. Level 50, Perfect Balance. This is going to become a main feature for the job later, so get used to Perfect Balance now. This has charges, and can store up to two of them. The charge time is 40 seconds. You can only use this once getting into combat. Upon using it, you will be given three stacks of Perfect Balance to use within the next 20 seconds. Perfect Balance stacks remove all form requirements and will proc all form bonuses. For example, you can go right to Demolish without doing True Strike or Twin Snakes. Boot Shine is guaranteed to crit no matter what. Don't forget, every crit is progress toward another Steel Peak. Sure, your other forms might crit, but you can't guarantee it. This is why Opo Opo ends up being your best use for perfect balance in single target. Alternate back and forth between them. The problem is once perfect balance ends, you are formless. So you must restart the rotation from your Opo Opo skills and no form to continue on. This entirely gets fixed at level 60, but until then it's a really annoying problem. For AoE, spam Rockbreaker. Both other AoE attacks are just weaker. If you've started an AoE combo, finish it to get that Rockbreaker, then go right into perfect balance for Rockbreaker spamming. Now let's talk about our opener at level 50. The only goals right now are making use of Perfect Balance and spending Steel Peak. Pre-Pull, Meditation, Dragon Kick, Twin Snakes, Demolish, Steel Peak, Dragon Kick, Perfect Balance, Boot Shine, Dragon Kick, Boot Shine, Perfect Balance, Dragon Kick, Boot Shine, Dragon Kick, Dragon Kick, True Strike, Snap Punch, Boot Shine, then continue on to the 2-2-3 ratio. We start the rotation with Dragon Kick because it's a higher base potency than Boot Shine. Anytime we lack a form, Dragon Kick starts us off. It doesn't give us Fury though, as that requires the Opo Opo form. We use Twin Snakes and Demolish to get their Fury stacks and Steel Peak here. We use it this late because of any potential buffs we might get. 
This early on there aren't many, but this is good practice for later when many jobs have buffs. We doom one more dragon kick to get fury before moving into perfect balance. Again, it comes this late for buff reasons. Simply because it's our strongest option, we just spend all of our time spamming our Opo Opo skills. After the second perfect balance, we will have fury, but not the Opo Opo form. So we're going to go through our combo before our fourth boot shine. That guaranteed crit is going to be big. Further, consider that we have four guaranteed crits and potentially some random crits. You might get five chakra during this opener, in which case you steal peak again. Spend a chakra whenever you cap out, but because it is purely random, I can't put it in the opener after the first time. Once you're done, you're free to just follow the glowing lights. They will take you where you need to go until your next perfect balance, which will also be spent entirely within the Opo Opo form. Always use Dragon Kick first when you finish perfect balance, for the same reason we start with it in the opener. Don't get too used to this opener. The openers from level 60 and beyond are much more similar to each other and should be focused on. What we have here is just the fundamentals. Let's establish a basic AoE opener too, but also emphasize that it isn't that simple. A tank is likely going to pull multiple groups, and the pull doesn't only start at the last group. There's stuff you can do along the way. You can try to get some cheap hits in while you run. As a result, there's that entire section before the tank actually stops moving. But once they stop moving, and only after they stop moving, can we pull out all the stops. For our AoE, we don't have any resources beyond Chakra, so we just use Howling Fist once and focus on Rock Breaker Spam. Let's move on to the Heaven's Ward Toolkit next, and see where Monk truly begins. Level 52, Form Shift. Form Shift takes a GCD, but gives you Formless Fist for 30 seconds. This allows you to use any of your attacks and get the Form Bonus. It's as if you have all forms in one. If you use this before a battle and start with Dragon Kick, it will actually grant you Opo Opo's Fury. This is extremely important for Monk to maintain flow with moments of downtime. You never touch this mid-battle, just like Meditation. The exception is the same too. If a boss becomes untargetable or immune to damage, you use Form Shift before it comes back to be able to get right into your rotation again. Pre-fight and any sort of major downtime mid-fight, hit Form Shift to be able to do whatever you need. Just keep in mind that using it once is all you need, but you can use it again to refresh the timer if you used it too early in, say, a 40 second downtime. Level 54, Steel Peak Mastery, Forbidden Meditation, and the Forbidden Chakra. Forbidden Meditation is in itself an upgrade to Steeled Meditation. The Forbidden Chakra is an automatic upgrade to Steel Peak. This boils down to a simple potency boost, from 180 potency to a higher 310 potency. The Forbidden Chakra is the same in every other way. It's simply stronger, making it more important to use. This also makes Howling Fist only stronger on four or more enemies. Level 60, Enhanced Perfect Balance. This is where things get complicated, with this being Monk's main mechanic. Let's break it down. First, the Fury Gauge is now attached to the Beast Chakra Gauge. There are five circles, but two functions with them. The three in the middle are a new type of chakra called Beast Chakra. The two on the outside are called Nadi. Keep these names in mind as we go on. As for Enhanced Perfect Balance itself, using our form skills within Perfect Balance now grants us Beast Chakra. Each form correlates to a specific chakra. Opo Opo form skills grant Curl Chakra for weird semantic reasons. I will instead go by which form buttons give which chakra. Opo Opo is Pink Chakra, Raptor is Purple, and Curl is Green. This is not inherently important to remember, but if you make a mistake and hit the wrong button, this info can help you fix it. You can also try and look at the symbols, but they can be confusing to look at. Also note that this changed between Endwalker and Dawn Trail, where each chakra was associated with a different form. So if you got confused by that, you aren't imagining this change. So, we use Perfect Balance, use three attacks and get three chakra, then what? Then, we go to our next skill. Level 60, Masterful Blitz, from here on just called Blitz. Now we can suplex a train. Upon gaining three beast chakra, Blitz will turn into one of multiple different attacks. Which attack it turns into depends on how many different beast chakra you gained. One, two, or three different beast chakra is each a different skill. Each one is a global cooldown and grants you formless fist afterwards as if you hit form shift. 
This makes it easy to immediately get back into your rotation. Let's start with the two that matter. One Chakra and three Chakra. Level 60, Elixir Field, and Flint Strike. Both attacks do a whopping 800 potency AoE around yourself, that is 5 yams in radius, with 70% damage falloff. That translates to 240 potency of damage to all other enemies. Their effects and the way you get them are opposing though. Having only one type of Beast Chakra will give you Elixir Field. Having all three Beast Chakra types will give you Flint Strike. Elixir Field will grant you the Lunar Nadi, the one on the left. Flint Strike grants the Solar Nadi, the one on the right. Getting Flint Strike is pretty simple in general. Just follow your rotation like normal after hitting perfect balance. You can do your forms in any order you like though, as long as you hit all three. For Elixir Field though, this is why we wanted to practice that Bootshine and Dragon Kick alternating with perfect balance. Not only is it big damage, it's the ideal way to get Elixir Field. For AoE, use Rock Breaker spam to get Elixir Field, like we already established. Rock Breaker is your strongest AoE move, which if it wasn't obvious from that, your AoE skills do work for generating Beast Chakra. This means you should be using Blitz for AoE as well. While Elixir Field ends up being the best uses of Perfect Balance, we need both Nadi. We'll talk about the reason why in a bit, but let's talk about our worst Blitz. Level 60, Celestial Revolution. To access this Blitz, you must have two different Beast Chakra across the three you need. For example, one Opo Opo and two Raptor. This does an attack for 600 potency to a single target and opens the Lunar Nadi. If you already have a Lunar Nadi, it opens the Solar Nadi. This sounds alright, but it's by far the worst option. This is for only when you mess up your Beast Chakra. It's only single target and 200 potency lower than the other two options. Remember that Elixir Field grants the Lunar Nadi and Flint Strike grants Solar Nadi. So you want to use them both to get one of each Nadi. You only escape into Celestial Revolution if you make a mistake in Perfect Balance. For example, let's say you've already gotten the Solar Nadi from Flint Strike, which means you need the Lunar Nadi from Elixir Field. That's one type of Beast Chakra, meaning we'll do our Boot Shine and Dragon Kick alternating. So you hit Perfect Balance, then Boot Shine, and then accidentally hit True Strike. You just made a mistake with that True Strike. You needed only Opo Opo Chakra, and now you have both it and Raptor. But you can still get your Illuminati by using Dragon Kick and get Celestial Revolution. That is the sole use of this. So in summation, never Celestial Revolution if you can help it. It's purely an emergency option. A pattern is here in which we gain both Nadi. Let's look at the purpose of that. Level 60, Tornado Kick. Blitz will become Tornado Kick no matter what when both Nadi are filled. You still need three Beast Chakra, but it can be any combination. Elixir Field, Celestial Revolution, and Flint Strike will become Tornado Kick instead. You will aim for Elixir Field because again, the single form options are our most powerful uses of perfect balance. This is a massive 1200 potency hit to a target and 600 potency to all enemies within 5 yams of the initial target. So you do need to aim it differently than Elixir Field and Flint in order to hit the maximum number of enemies. Tornado Kick will then grant you Formless Fist like normal and remove both Nadi. This is our single biggest hit for both single target and AoE, all the way up to 100, especially for AoE. 2400 potency when using it on just three enemies, even higher on a bigger group. But of course, we're not going to ignore it during bosses. Use perfect balance every chance you get. As for using our formless fist on the way out, you always want to start with the applicable Opo Opo attack for single target and Rock Breaker for AoE. It's a free excuse to use your best basic attack. You'll then seamlessly transition back into the normal rotational flow, assuming you don't go right back into perfect balance. Let's talk about how it affects our opener. As I mentioned previously, this is smoother and is essentially the opener you follow all the way up to level cap with all the additional skills we gain added into this base. Well, one of the openers at least. This is known as the Double Lunar Opener, which in itself has three variants on the balance. There is also the Solar Lunar Opener, which has three variants as well. Using two Elixir Fields sounds like you're going to lose out on a lot of Tornado Kick power. The thing is, Openers are made with trials and raids in mind, rather than dungeons. Because of this, we're focusing on how the job performs for an entire fight 
and how it aligns with party buffs. By level 60, a lot more jobs have gained some form of damage buff for the whole party. More will come with higher levels. Since buffs are multiplicative, using them all at the same time makes everything many times stronger. Outside of a raid setting, and especially with random players, you can't count on proper raid buffing. However, practicing the potentially stronger opener puts you ahead if you start doing harder content, or just get a really good group of randoms. So let's dive into the double lunar opener and see how it goes down. This opener is taking advantage of the party buffs to the fullest, while also being a simplified version of the level 100 opener. It makes further learning far easier. Prep our chakra and form before the start of a fight. Form shift will make sure that the first dragon kick will grant us fury. Then we jump right into perfect balance. In the middle of this, all party buffs should be used if your allies have any. By the time you reach elixir field, it will be buffed as much as possible. We also hold forbidden chakra a bit to ensure all buffs are up. But its position here specifically is also due to level 100's opener. You can move it back one slot if you wish, but muscle memory can be a fickle thing. After elixir field, we have formless fist. This allows us to use dragon kick to gain fury again, before going right back into perfect balance. Better to use the formless fist first, since every extra opo opo skill we get is a gain. After the second elixir field, we just follow the lights into the 2 to 3 ratio. Again, there is no guarantee we get a second forbidden chakra, but be ready to use it if you get 5 chakra. Finally, there are deeper reasons for this opener, reasons that make a lot more sense at level 70, but are useful now. I will explain the specifics with the 70 opener, but for now I'll say you should know it leads to Tornado Kick being buffed a lot. As for AoE, we have a bit of a conundrum. AoE openers are something people asked for because of dungeons, not raids. With only 4 party members, buffs are going to be fewer. You could do the double lunar opener, but in AoE. If nothing else, this sets you up for practice. The first pull you double lunar, and then from this point on you aim to get Tornado Kick. But at the very start of the duty, the first time, it's fine. Otherwise do both lunar and solar if need be. Stormblood is going to be an expansion that really emphasizes the timing of things. Skills that might be simple on the surface, but have wider implications. Level 64, Riddle of Earth and Earth's Reply. On a 2 minute cooldown, Riddle of Earth will reduce all incoming damage for yourself for 10 seconds. If you take damage during Riddle of Earth, you will get Earth's Resolve. This will give you a 100 potency heal over time, or HOT. Dots and HOTs work on a server tick of 3 seconds, meaning it will heal you every 3 seconds. In total, this is a 500 potency heal. If you get hit a second time during Riddle of Earth, the timer will not reset. You also gain Earth's Rumination for 30 seconds. This gives you access to Earth's Reply, which can be the same or a different button as Riddle of Earth. This is a small AoE heal. It will heal you and all allies within 5 yams, the same size as your attacking AoEs. Everyone in range will be healed for 300 potency of damage. If you are under the Earth's Resolve buff, it is increased to 500 potency. When a boss is doing some form of heavy raid-wide damage, pop Riddle of Earth to reduce it by a good chunk. It helps the healers, especially if you're making mistakes. If you have a vulnerability stack from a previous mistake, you can negate it by using Riddle of Earth. Earth's Reply allows you to heal up the damage yourself too. The AoE effect of this heal is also very difficult to use as an AoE. The size is very small, and players tend to be spread very far apart. Healing other players is not something you can count on outside high-end content. On the plus side, you may be able to hold on to the use since it has a 30 second timer. Maybe a stack marker is coming up next. Everyone will be together for the stack. A difficult use for this is in wall-to-wall -wall pulling. Because your attacking AoEs are the same range, you will be close to the tank. Not only will Riddle of Earth help if you accidentally stand in an AoE, you can use Earth's Reply to heal both yourself and the tank. A tiny heal for the tank is better than none. It's free and could be enough to help the healer out. Level 68, Riddle of Fire. With a 60 second cooldown, this increases damage dealt by 15% for 20 seconds. You should be using this on cooldown when inside of combat. There is little thought to be put in beyond it doing more damage. In the opener and every two minutes, this is even stronger because of the previously mentioned raid buffing. Buffs are multiplicative, making each other stronger. Be sure you're using it every time you can, especially before blitz attacks. 15% on top of potencies that high? Not much more to consider. Level 70, 
Brotherhood. Further emphasizing your power is Brotherhood. On a 2 minute cooldown, this has a few effects. First, this applies Brotherhood to you and all players within 30 yards of yourself. This is a damage increase of 5% for 20 seconds. Small, but notable when you consider multiplying buffs. Secondly, we have Meditative Brotherhood for 20 seconds, and this is the bigger part. There is a 20% chance that you, or any team member under the effect of Meditative Brotherhood, grants you a chakra anytime they use a weapon skill or spell. With up to 7 other players in your party, 20% becomes a lot of chakra very fast. This even stacks with the critical hit chakra, so Bootshine can give you 2 chakra at once. To help make this less overwhelming and not waste chakra, your chakra gauge is expanded during Brotherhood. You can gain up to 10 chakra in the gauge. This allows you to slightly overshoot the amount you need for Forbidden Chakra and Howling Fist without losing that chakra. Spend your chakra as you receive it and you won't hit the temporary 10 cap. And you do want to spend it immediately since the moment Brotherhood ends, any chakra you have past the 5 mark will be lost. So while the party effect is very little to think about beyond making sure you use it on cooldown for 2 minute burst windows, the effect it has on you is very active. The 20% chance is relatively low, but there's too many attacks going off for you to not be flooded with chakra. You'll be weaving in Forbidden Chakra and Howling Fist aplenty now. While we did get two more skills we want to put into openers, this doesn't exactly change what our opener looks like too much. It's more in what isn't shown that we'll be focusing on. That late Forbidden Chakra use makes a lot more sense now with Brotherhood and Riddle of Fire right before it. This buffs its damage along with all the other party buffs we'll receive. What isn't shown here is all the other times you'll use the Forbidden Chakra. There is no way to know when you will get enough Chakra, even if it's about guaranteed to get some. Sometimes you might get 5 full uses, sometimes only 1 or 2. It really is purely random how much Chakra you get. Even calculating for an average, when you get the chakra is still unknown, so just fit in the forbidden chakra in every opportunity you get. Let's talk about the fight wide effect of the opener. This is only a slightly involved tactic, but a very strong one. The game is on a 2 minute raid buff cycle. Party buffs usually have 2 minute cooldowns, and perfect balance will give you 3 charges every 2 minutes. That means 1 tornado kick per 2 minutes. The moment Riddle of Fire comes off of cooldown, one minute into the fight, we will use both it and one Perfect Balance to get the Solenati. Then we will ignore Perfect Balance until the two minute mark. Right as you hit two stacks of Perfect Balance, you go into Perfect Balance and do your opener essentially all over again. Because you have both Nadi, your first Alexa Field will be Tornado Kick instead. Your second elixir field will be normal, giving you the Lunanati. So not only does it align Tornado Kick with party buffs when you circle back around, it means you can perform generally the same actions every 2 minute window, with those actions already being strong on their own. It ends up minimizing the difficulty of the job while maximizing the potential power. This is why it might be worth doing in Dungeons 2, which means a double Luna AoE opener. Fewer party members means it's less effective, it's a dungeon so hardly all that required, but will at least maybe give you some practice. It's a toss up, but the decision is ultimately up to you. Just replace the second Lunar with a Solanati if you prefer. That's the Stormblood kit. It wasn't a lot, but it was very important. Establishing the fight wide effects of this opener will hopefully show why it's potentially so strong. Shadowbringers is going to be mostly passive and utility. Level 72, Riddle of Wind. With an odd 90 second cooldown, your auto attack delay is reduced by 50% for 15 seconds. Yes really, that's it. So simply just use it on cooldown. Yes, even though it has a 90 second cooldown, use it the moment it is available in combat. Waiting 30 seconds to use it with Brotherhood isn't worth it. It will eventually line back up anyway. Level 74, Deep Meditation 2. This is a tiny buff, but it is noticeable. Critical hits were an 80% chance to open Chakra, now it's a 100% chance. Every single critical hit you get is a Chakra. Before there was that small chance Bootshine didn't give any, now Bootshine will always come with a free Chakra. Helpful to use the next skill. Level 74, Howling Fist Mastery, Enlightened Meditation, and Enlightenment. Just like with the Forbidden Chakra, 
This is an upgraded Howling Fist and its associated meditation. It goes from a 100 potency AoE to 200 potency. This makes Enlightenment stronger than the Forbidden Chakra on as few as two enemies. For the time being, at least. Level 76, Enhanced Greased Lightning 3. We were already fast, but now we are speed. ka Grease Lightning 4 brings us to 20% GCD and auto attack delay reduction. This puts us at a 2.0 second global cooldown across the board. This may need some time to adjust to, since you've done so many levels without this final speed boost. Level 80, Six-Sided Star. This is Monk's deranged attack, essentially. It has a 4 second recast, making the cooldown as long as two normal GCDs. It does 710 potency of damage and increases your movement speed for 5 seconds. So you can stay in range of the enemy a little bit longer, use Six-Sided Star, run out of range, and run back in and lose little to no uptime. This interacts with Chakra too. Every Chakra you have in your pool will boost the power of Six-Sided Star by 80 potency. This isn't that great a skill for an average player. In a lot of casual content, you don't need to use this. You have time to use a normal attack like Boot Shine, run out, and back in. Sometimes you don't need to run out at all. The biggest trap players fall into is, there is an AoE marker anywhere in the entire arena, I need to run away from the boss. This especially applies to melee players. Instead, you stand at max melee range, and most things you will be able to dodge while still attacking. The times where you can't do this, use Six-Sided Star. You will be able to move out of range quickly and get back in just as quick. Just don't fall into the trap of using it every single time any sort of AoE appears. It's an option for safety, not the default thing you go for anytime there's any sort of dodging. As for an opener, the only difference is adding in Riddle of Wind along with our use of the Forbidden Chakra. The shorter timer on Riddle of Wind means the full duration will be under the effect of Brotherhood and Riddle of Fire. That's all there is to say besides remember to use everything on cooldown typically. Like I said, passive and utility. Endwalker isn't going to be much different on that end. We still gotta go over it anyway. Level 82, Armor the Destroyer Mastery and Shadow of the Destroyer. This upgrades Armor the Destroyer to be more in line with your normal combo strings. Shadow of the Destroyer is 120 potency, which was the Opo Opo bonus potency of Arm of the Destroyer. The Opo Opo bonus is upgraded to an automatic critical hit, just like Bootshine. Because of this, Shadow of the Destroyer can be better than Rockbreaker for perfect balance. Rockbreaker is 30 higher potency, but guaranteed crits give you far more power on average. A crit is 40% extra power on the low end, plus a free chakra. The extra chakra adds up fast, to extra uses of Enlightenment, further widening the gap. So use Shadow of the Destroyer for your Illuminati in AoE. Level 84, Enhanced Thunderclap. Very simple, but no less useful. Thunderclap has up to three charges as a max. The cooldown is short, and there are large periods of times you might not need to Thunderclap at all. Being able to pull uses and use more of them when the need arises is always good. Level 84, Melee Mastery. This is just a bunch of potency boosts. Boot Shine is now a base 220 potency, True Strike 300, Snap Punch 270, Twin Snakes 380, Demolish to 320, Dragon Kick to 280, and the Forbidden Chakra to 400 potency. This makes each chakra with 80 potency, which is why Six Sided Star was a boost of 80. Level 86, Flint Strike Mastery and Rising Phoenix. Rising Phoenix is an upgrade to Flint Strike. It all works the same way, being a 5 yom AoE around yourself. But now it does 900 potency with the same 70% drop off. That's 270 potency to all enemies after the first. Level 88, Enhanced Brotherhood. So remember how Brotherhood gave us a ton of chakra? Now every single weapon skill we do while under Brotherhood is guaranteed to give us chakra. Your allies are still only a 20% gain, but you yourself will always gain Chakra with every single GCD you do. You can now guarantee a Forbidden Chakra after 5 GCDs, but you can still get it earlier. Level 90, Tornado Kick Mastery and Phantom Rush. This upgrades our Tornado Kick into Phantom Rush. The flashiness of the move brings 1400 potency of damage to a target and 700 potency of damage to every enemy within 5 yums of the initial target. 
It's otherwise the exact same skill, just a bit stronger and way cooler to look at. The only opening changes would be on the AoE end. Instead of Rock Breaker, use Shadow of the Destroyer. Remember that you're probably going to get multiple enlightenments in here, at least two not shown. Otherwise, that's the only change. The tangible bonuses we did get, like Thunderclap, are nice, but Endwalker is a very empty expansion for us overall. Dawn Trail does a bit better on that front, and let's see how. Level 92, Beast Chakra Mastery, Leaping Opo, Rising Raptor, Pouncing Curl, and Elixir Burst. This is an animation and power boost to our Fury Spenders of Bootshine, True Strike, and Snap Punch. Their names match which form they are a part of. Also, the Oppo skill icon looks weird, but it's because you're clawing the enemy. Anyway, Leaping Oppo is a base 260 potency with a Fury potency of 460. Rising Raptor is 340 potency with a Fury potency of 560. Pouncing Curl is 310 potency, a positional bonus of 60 for 370 potency, and a Fury plus positional potency of 520. Elixir Field is the final boost, becoming Elixir Burst. It is 900 potency, just like Rising Phoenix. The cool no animations to look at, but still just power boosts. Level 94, Melee Mastery 2. Oh, another power boost. Twin Snakes is now 420 potency, Demolish is 360 potency with a positional bonus to 420 potency. Dragon Kick is 320 potency, Six-Sided Star is 780 potency, and Phantom Rush is 1500 potency. Level 96, Enhanced Riddle of Wind, and Wind's Reply. After using Riddle of Wind, we get the ability to use Wind's Reply once. We have until Riddle of Wind ends to use Wind's Reply. This is a line AoE on the GCD. It has a 10 yom range, hitting all enemies within that line. It does 900 potency to the first enemy hit, and 450 potency to all additional enemies. You can split this up into two buttons if you wish, or leave it as one. Whichever you need, just make sure you use this every chance you get. It's too strong to miss out on. Level 100, Enhanced Drill of Fire, and Fire's Reply. This is very similar to the last skill. Using Riddle of Fire will give one use of Fire's Reply, on its own button if you so choose. This is a ranged attack on a chosen target, so you can use it from up to 20 yoms away. This gives it some slight flexibility, but remember you're on a short time limit. Despite how the tooltip says it, this does not deal damage to all nearby enemies, it shoots the orb at the target, and all enemies within range of that target are hit. This deals 1200 potency to the initial target, and 600 potency to all enemies around it. Just like Wind's Reply, make sure you use this. Interestingly though, there's one more effect. You are granted Formless Fist. As we've already established, we always use an Opo Opo skill with Formless Fist from Blitz. We do the same thing here, giving us even more Opo Opo skill uses overall. The real effect of these skills is much more obvious in our openers. Given they are GCDs, we can't just slot them in anywhere. This opener still fits in both Elixir Bursts under the timers of Riddle of Fire and Brotherhood, while letting both replies get priority. This delays our second perfect balance by a bit, since we have three GCDs to use. We're not going to skip the free Formless Fist from Fire's Reply after all. We use Wind's Reply first, simply because of the shorter timer of Riddle of Wind. After this end spot, we slide back into the 2-2-3 ratio. But notice that every single form GCD in this opener is Opo Opo. This should re-emphasize how strong these skills are. Otherwise, it's just a natural evolution and adding things. Which means it's time for the karaoke opener. This is where I will speak of the opener's skill names as they happen. This will give you a better idea of how fast the opener is and how it will feel to perform. I will also include the extra uses of the Forbidden Chakra I get. We may not be able to perfectly place them for a visual example, but using your chakra remains important. Pre-pull, Meditation, and Form Shift. Dragon Kick, Perfect Balance. Leaping Opo. Dragon Kick, Brotherhood, Riddle of Fire, Leaping Opo, The Forbidden Chakra, Riddle of Wind, Elixir Burst. Dragon Kick. Wind's Reply. Fire's Reply. Leaping Opo, Perfect Balance. Dragon Kick, The Forbidden Chakra. Leaping Opo, The Forbidden Chakra. Dragon Kick. Elixir Burst, The Forbidden Chakra. Leaping Opo. For a quick reference to AoE, it's essentially the same changes. 
fit in both replies after your first perfect balance. The power is extra high for AoE, as AoE tends to do. Don't forget, every Shadow of the Destroyer is guaranteed crit chakra, so you'll be filling up on chakra very quickly, even with less party members around. Overall, Dawn Trail Monk is streamlined in a way that makes it way easier to understand how to play. It lost a lot of depth in the buff management, but still remains a very fun time. Some people might find they are now fans. Thank you for watching this Monk 1 to 100 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators. You can also come watch me on Twitch, or even go follow my Patreon. The links in the description will take you where you need to. Have fun in your adventures across Tyrol, and may the power of Anna Hogs stay waste to your enemies.